It's just life is a lot, you know? So it's like, you're always going through something. And I think um, I've been through a lot, you know, in the past few years, like a lot of other people because of COVID and quarantine. And in the past couple years, I've, I've really had to take a good look at myself and a good look at my life. And um, it's been it's been just constantly trying to fix it because I'm having to deal with it. Like usually I'm on tour and I'm distracted by all the stuff I have to do. And it's like, all right, we got to get to an interview. We got to get to a different state. We got to hop on a plane. We got to show <laughs> to college, you know? So it's like, I didn't have a lot of time to really sit with myself mm -hmm. and think about like where my life had gone and where I was. But having to sit with myself, it's like, I re it was right in front of my face. Mm -hmm. And um, I just did so much work, you know? Mm -hmm. I did so much like inner work and uh, I kind of just, found myself and um and I'm even every day I'm finding myself more you know mm -hmm. I can get lost at 3 p.m and find myself at 6 p.m <laughs> you know See, I so. think some people feel like if one little tiny thing happens throughout your day it's like okay the rest of the day is gone so, right. you know but like to be more gentle with yourself in that sense and that's something I definitely work on do you feel like you ever have moments when like the universe is feeding you like what you've been manifesting or praying for and like things are going really well and then it's like the first obstacle that comes in the way how do you kind of keep hope in those situations does that make sense yeah yeah i've definitely i think the the universe whenever you're really working towards what you want mm -hmm. the universe is gonna you know give you what you need you know it might not be what you want but it'll be what you need you know okay. even when it when it comes in the form of a hardship you know, it's like you have to get through that, you know? I mean, you have to get through that in a healthy way. You can't use those, it's like a test. It's like, uh, it's like you've been practicing, you've been learning, and now you get tested, you mm -hmm. know? And and it's all about how you handle that test. Because mm -hmm. if you don't pass it, then you have to take it again. You know, it's like, you, you really have to use everything you've learned to be like, all right, I know this, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And I don't have to revert back to my old stuff. and. In, once you get, once you push past it, it's like boom. You know, I don't think it's easy. Healing is not, it's not easy, especially when you have to unlearn years of like, you know, bad traits and toxic mm -hmm. ways and stuff like that. I'm glad you just said unlearn because I feel like there are so many behaviors and like relationship dynamics that whatever was modeled for you as a kid, it's like that's just kind of the cards that you're dealt, and mm -hmm. you have to once you have the freedom when you're older to be able to read books, listen to podcasts, you know, seek resources to help you become the person that you're trying to be. What is something that you feel like you had to unlearn from your childhood? Um, I, I think I had to unlearn that you do things for other people. You know, you do things within yourself for other people. You know, like mm -hmm. you dress nice so you can be presentable to the world. You know, you it's like you have to be one with yourself you know you have to do it for you i wish i would have learned that you do things you're supposed to do things for you you know and mm -hmm. the most important relationship is the relationship with yourself mm -hmm. you know um i think uh growing up uh where it's always oh you're not doing it right you're not you know you're not right mm -hmm. you're you're defective in a way it's like i think a lot of kids grow up feeling like yo there's something wrong with me you know and so i have to be like that or i have to be like that I think that's where the disconnect happens and where people have to spend their lives returning to who am I and what do I want to be and what do I like and you know so really just creating that relationship with myself again and um just really coming back to that and looking in the mirror and the conversations I've had with myself like every day I have conversations with myself and I forgive myself when I have thoughts those intrusive thoughts that are kind of like Oh, you didn't do that right. You know, mm -hmm. that thing that you did this morning, that wasn't right. That thing that you said, it wasn't right. And then I forgive myself mm -hmm. instead of like tr go back a year. I was just being real hard on myself. Like you, mm -hmm. like you said, like I was letting just, it define mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Like you are that, like you are that negative trait or, mm -hmm. and now I'm just like, no, that's not me. And what I did, that was a mistake. And I forgive myself for that and I won't do it moving forward. Mm -hmm when do you think that shift happened for you like my mom has been sending me books like since mm -hmm. i was 18 you know yeah. trying to plant these seeds of this um 
emotional intelligence or just higher knowledge, things like that. And it's like, I wasn't ready to receive those messages. And so as I'm getting older, listening to new podcasts and things like that, I'm starting to realize, oh, there's a lot of work to be done right, here. Right. So when did you kind of recognize that within yourself? It definitely wasn't by myself. I definitely okay. didn't like one day wake up and was like, oh, I get it. Or mm. um, I did a lot of reading, mm -hmm. you know, like I, uh, I started with this book called The Body Keeps the Score. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned so much. And at first I was just like, you know, I'm just going to start reading more. And I started with that. And I'm reading it. And I'm like, it's cool, whatever. Like, and then <laughs> started getting deeper and deeper. And I started loving the book. Mm -hmm. And then I started um, just really using it in my everyday life and mm -hmm. thinking about it and thinking about And I started identifying things, you know, in my mm -hmm. life and things that I needed to to work on mm -hmm. and uh, it just became one of my favorite things. And after that, reading was just a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, definitely that was, I think that was the catalyst to where I was just like, I, I'm on a journey now. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I finally see like a light at the tunnel, a light mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel where things can be better and my life can improve, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like for people that are so deep into the darkness, it can be hard for them to make that decision to pick up the book or mm -hmm. you know search resources so what advice would you have for people who are going through a hard time and they don't really have positive people around them nobody's having these conversations you know mm -hmm. what i mean and especially when you go on social media it's like brands and companies are not trying to put right, conscious right. mindful material in front of you so what would your best advice be for someone who kind of feels stuck in that space yeah the, the surface level advice is like, you know, stay on social media. <laughs> it's like, you know, pick up the book. Mm -hmm. It's like do things that are good for yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can tell people to do all of that stuff. And that's cool. That's that's what you're supposed to do. But I think the thing that helps me personally is like when I tell myself, slow it down, you know, mm -hmm. like like whenever I'm at that that height of anxiety and depression, um, that's really the only thing that puts me back on my path. Mm -hmm. It's like, bro, slow it down. Mm -hmm. It's like, cause every, there's a lot going on right now. So take it one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Number one, you're gonna take your shower. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna take your shower, you're gonna brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. You're gonna put on your clothes, you're gonna put on, you know, mm -hmm. moisturize your face, you're gonna do it, you know. And I just take it one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. Because I think like our thoughts are everything. Our thoughts are literally the whole manifestation you know, of our life. Mm -hmm. And um, so really, I think that's really number one to mm -hmm. like read, to get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna read the book. Mm -hmm. To get to the point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna not look at social media. If everything is just moving fast pace, you're missing it and you can't really, you, you, you can't, you're not slowing down enough to enjoy your life, to appreciate what's right in front of you and to be present mm -hmm. because you're, old, you're, you're either in, you're in the past and then you're in the future, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, how can you be everywhere <laughs> at once? And, and so like slowing it down, it's like brings you to the present. Definitely. You know? I think sometimes we feel like I have to change the world. So like, and mm -hmm. it's like not today. Right. Like if you take not care today. of yourself, <laughs> like every day you're gonna do something that's going to feed that. Right. In your music, you talk pretty candidly about mental health. Has that always been a conversation that's been comfortable for you to put out into the world. I feel like uh, I grew up in a home where mental health was ignored completely, you know? And so when, it, and I was kind of, it seemed like it was only happening to me, you know? It seemed like, um, it, because everybody made me feel like that, you know? Like, mm -hmm. like yo, you're weird for, for, for feeling the way you do, you know? And um, so I use music to kind of like, just talk about how I feel since my feelings were never valid anywhere else. Yeah, and so at first, I, I didn't even think I was talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. I figured I was just um, telling my story and talking about you know how I felt about life. And it wasn't until I actually started learning you know about the mind and the brain and how it works and how um, trauma affects your life and how it affects your personality that I started realizing that I've been on this journey the whole time and now I can actually pinpoint what's what and you know mm -hmm. so I'm just now realizing wow I'm actually like a mental health advocate mm -hmm. and 
it just made me want to be more careful about what I say and what I put into the world. Yeah. That's real. This day and age, it's great that we are talking about mental health. Like, I feel like we're the first generation that's kind of grown up where that's been a priority. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there is a very great responsibility that comes with that. Even when I used to nanny, I feel like hearing the younger kids talk about like, I'm depressed or I have anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's define these terms. Like, let's also Mm -hmm. um, not like let it define you. I think that when we just kind of put a period mark at the end of certain diagnosis, diagnose, what is it? Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Okay. (laughs) Diagnosis. Um, Yeah, like I think that it's important. It's great that we are talking about mental health, but to also make sure that it's rooted in like some research and we, you know, kind of set ourselves up for success. It's funny, I was talking to, my grandma's like 97, she lives in New Mexico, and I was talking to her the other day, and she doesn't really like leave the house, especially because of the pandemic, and I was like, I always tell her, I'm like, you gotta make sure you're taking care of your body, but also your mente, and she's like, said almost like a little kid, she's like, mente is mine, and she's like, how? And I'm like, it kind of hit me, I was like, I genuinely think she's like, take care of your mind, like, Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And like, I felt myself kind of breaking it down to her and I'm like, make sure you're going and getting sunlight. Make sure you are, you know, feeding yourself, nourishing your body, like listening to good music. You know, I think our parents, our grandparents, mental health was not a conversation for them. So we can't let our experiences define how we raise our kids and how we view the world. True. Who was the first person in your life that you felt you could have candid conversations about mental health, would you say? Nobody, mm. you know, nobody in my um, especially in my family, especially growing up, um, you know, something and, and it's so crazy because even in my adult life, I ended up having conversations about my mental health with people that kind of just like held it against me, you know what I mean, and uh, used it like weaponized it, you know, okay. and so it it made it even harder, you know, but um. I think now I just kind of, um, it's, it's kind of my relationship with myself and my mental health is like, um, I guess my therapist, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had a, I had a therapist and, um, talking to him was, you know, it helped me, you know, mm-hmm. allow me to get my feelings out and, and, and cry about it and, and just talk about, you know, how I was feeling and stuff like that. For someone who's never been to therapy, what would you tell them to expect? Um, depends on the therapist. That's true, you know? right? Yeah. What was your first experience in therapy? Like, what was something you were totally unexpecting? I was not expecting to be crying like that. You know, on your first yeah, trip, definitely. Okay. Uh, I think, like I told you, I didn't speak about mental health with anybody. You know, mm-hmm. and um, well, my mental health, and so just talking to a therapist and talking about the things that bothered me mm-hmm. just had me breaking down. And I don't think I ever really told anybody that. You know. Wow. But um, and I my first experience was years ago, and I only went to a couple of sessions, and then I stopped going. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and because it was like it's uncomfortable to have to go come face to face with those feelings, and years later I went to therapy again and I stayed. You know, okay. because it's like bro, I can't keep on mm-hmm. um, like doing this and self sabotaging and things like that. Mm-hmm. So. Talk yeah. about self-sabotage. Because honestly, mm. I feel like the more research I'm doing and just different TED Talks I'm hearing, I feel like everything comes back to self-worth. Mm. And if you did not grow up in an environment where your thoughts and your feelings were validated, then as an adult, that's just going to be foreign to you. So when did you start to realize your self-sabotaging behaviors? For someone who doesn't know like what does mm. self-sabotage mean, how would you help them identify that in their life? Well, I think I identified it when I realized that I had these plans and I had these feelings and I had these thoughts and the way I wanted my life to be mm-hmm. and my life was just wasn't going in that direction. Mm. So obviously that's on me, you know? I can't blame somebody else. I can't I can't blame every girlfriend I have for all my relationships, you know? Mm-hmm. Um just going to to garbage. Mm. But um yeah, so it's just like I think um when you actually realize like this is your life and you're an adult and your life is not moving in the direction you want it to like Mm -hmm. your plans are one thing Mm -hmm. 
but how it's showing up in your actual life is another thing. Mm -hmm. So that's self-sabotage because it's like, you know, you can't, you're not make, you don't want it to happen. It's like you want it to happen, mm -hmm. but you don't for some reason, you know, some, for some reason you're holding yourself back. What does that reason tend to be? Or like when you think about yourself, like, mm -hmm. is it a lack of self-worth or? I think it's fear. Fear and a lack of self-worth definitely go hand in hand mm -hmm. because it's like you don't believe that you deserve mm -hmm. what, um, you know, what you actually want, mm -hmm. you know, you don't believe that that's for you. You know, I, I think that's it's like subconsciously in your brain, like, you know, even though I want it, I'm not going to get it. Mm -hmm. Like, who do I think I am to get <laughs> the yeah. things that I want out of life? You know, and so, um, yeah, and it's a lack of self-love because when you don't love yourself, you don't do things for yourself. You know, it's love is that universal thing. Doesn't matter if it's with another person or with you or with your parents. Uh, love is the same. Love is the constant. It's like the way I love myself, I'm going to love somebody else, mm -hmm. you know. And um, like one thing I realized that when I was, I was in a relationship, when I started like this really getting into this journey and I started loving myself more. I started doing things for myself more and just being kinder to myself and speaking nicer to myself. And I realized that the person I was with didn't even, they didn't love me to the capacity that I was loving myself. Wow. And I realized that, yo, I can't do this, you know? But before that, I felt like that was what I deserved, you know? Mm. So until you, until you actually start loving yourself, you're gonna accept less. You're gonna accept less than what you deserve because you're not even giving yourself that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, like having, it's like having a house. If you treat your house like garbage and you keep it dirty, then somebody's gonna go into your house and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go into your house and be like, oh, it's cool to, it's cool to do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But when you treat your house really nice, people are gonna come in and be like, whoa, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I got it. Should I take my shoes off? You exactly. Know? So, um, so you gotta be, that it all starts with how you treat yourself. And, and also yeah. not just cleaning your house because someone's coming over. Right, I right, think right. So. It's keeping it clean. You mm -hmm. got to keep it. But you can tell when somebody just does it for the moment mm -hmm. and when they live like that. You know, when you like you can it's, it's, it's evident, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we think too much about what things look like on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and at least definitely the way that I grew up. I remember driving down the street and you see like everybody's, especially during the holidays, their lights yep, up yep. inside. You know, you mm -hmm. see people walking around, but you have no idea what is going on within people's homes. And like everybody can paint a picture that they want you to see for the short time that you're there. But like once you realize like, oh, taking care of myself not only gives me access to a part of myself that I've never even gotten to pour into, but I'm also gonna get access to people in this world that are actually the type of people that mm -hmm. are gonna recognize my value right. and right. you know add to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do you feel like where you're at now, your younger self, that kid who like didn't have anybody to talk to when he was younger, do you think he would be able to fathom? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't, I think when I was a kid, I didn't have, um, I didn't have plans of of being emotionally aware, you know, and, and, and conscious of myself to that level. Mm -hmm. I didn't have, um, I had plans. I knew I wanted to make music. I knew I wanted to do these um, very tangible things. Mm -hmm. As far as like the music and all of that, it's like that's stuff I had to do if mm -hmm. I wanted to get out of my situation. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, my younger self would be like, damn, you, <laughs> you, you did a lot more than I thought you were gonna do, bro. Okay. You yeah. know? Has the vision always been pretty clear about what you were trying to do with your life? Did you have to find yourself like explaining it to people? I mean, when you want to be an artist, you end up doing a lot of explaining, you know? Because <laughs> even now where I'm at a level of success, I could be talking to my grandma or something, and she'll be like, oh, you still doing that music thing? You still doing that little music thing? And I'm like, yeah, grandma, I'm still doing that yeah. little, you know? <laughs> it's like people don't, some people don't get it, especially from like other cultures. Like try to explain to them, you're like, you make music like what no what's your job you know like what do you actually do so um it's always you're always explaining and you just kind of accept it and mm -hmm. just and just do your thing but when you're not at that level of success and you don't kind of you kind of don't have that to validate yourself mm -hmm. or to for anybody to you know to for you to be validated to anybody else you kind of um it can be uh it can be kind of like disheartening and but you just got to push through and keep going
you know? At least for me, I know that it's easy for me to go into solitude. Like, I am cool being by mm -hmm. myself, but I'm trying to be self-aware to know when that's holding me back from building my community or even just being able to serve the world in the mm -hmm. way I'm supposed to. So how do you kind of find that balance of protecting your energy, but also, you know, yeah. doing what you're supposed to do in this world? I'm a very solitary person, like mm -hmm. by nature. Uh, when it comes to making my music, I'm always by, I'm usually always by myself. And if I don't consciously make an effort to like um, bring my community in and uh, really get another producer or get my friends to help me with records and stuff like that, like I will, I will always, I will spend two months alone. I will spend three months wow. making an album just by myself in my room, no haircuts, no nothing, <laughs> just like looking crazy, feeling crazy, mm -hmm. and. Um, so it's some that's something, uh, especially through reading, that expect like about like mental health books and you know self help books, that community is so important and that's something I never really knew. Recently, I've just been really leaning on my community mm. and making a conscious effort to to bring people into my life and support my people and like really just reach out and make sure like yo like we have to stick together and mm -hmm. you know because it's 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 so important for your mental health and your like longevity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was talking to my roommate the other day and we we're talking about like when you're in new social spaces and she was saying like yeah you know sometimes i'll ask myself like if everybody else is laughing at a joke and i'm the only one not getting it or mm -hmm. whatever like i'll ask myself what's wrong with me and i was like oh like they're just not your people and we kept talking and it's like five mm -hmm. minutes later she was like what did you say again she's like i never thought about it that way that it's not something wrong with me yeah. it's just these are not my people yeah. you know what i mean so and i think that like people especially with social media you can look and see people posting stories and going to events and all mm -hmm. this stuff you can think that maybe being around more people is what's good for you but preserving like the very i think like sacred parts of yourself that are your gifts that are supposed to be how you you know take up space in this world mm -hmm. like that was a very precious thing so like don't feel like you have to be throwing yourself into all these different you know social situations but how do you keep that balance of being by yourself and being with other people do you like say okay one time a week i need to go get coffee with this friend or like how do you kind of not get lost in the mix of working and family and relationships right it's something that i constantly have to work on mm -hmm. because life is so much you know one thing i started doing a few months ago was just like planning out my days you know just really planning it out it's like okay uh, from this time to this time, I'm gonna have my morning ritual, mm -hmm. you know, from from this time to this time, I'm gonna do some work and get some stuff done. This time to this time, I'm gonna do a little meditation or work out or whatever, mm -hmm. like that's my like recreation time. And then I'm gonna pick up my son and then have fun with him and we're gonna do some stuff. And then you, I, I would like make time on the weekends for like friends and, mm -hmm. and extra stuff that mm -hmm. I wanna do because I already have so many responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think when I did it like that, I I kind of forced myself to make time for everything because mm -hmm. everything is important. It's mm -hmm. like it's like taking a pill. It's like if the doctor prescribes you a pill, you got to take it whether you want to or not. Mm -hmm. And it will do wonders for your just life, you know? What advice do you have for people to kind of combat seasonal depression, winter blues, whatever you want to call it? I, I would say just, you know, make time for friends, you know? Yeah. They go to your house, you go to their house, mm -hmm. uh, and just, you know, have those. I love to watch a movie, and, you know, in the movie is like, there's a whole bunch of friends at somebody's house, and they're yeah. eating food, and having drinks, and laughing. And I think those are the moments that make winter, you know, bearable. Mm -hmm. It's not about, I wouldn't think, it's, for me, it's not about going to parties and going to clubs. Mm -hmm. It's just about being close to family. And um, I think maybe, as a society, we've lost that, you know, mm -hmm. because I thought during the holidays, everybody gets together and has fun and, and yeah, that's really what it's like all about. On yeah. Their phones. Yeah, but I remember growing up, it was always like that. It was always like everybody's at the family's house or we're all at a friend's house and it's, that was every day or every weekend. And now loneliness is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just reading in a book that um, the World Health Organization 
considers loneliness like a big health risk. Like mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest health risks because it causes depression and anxiety and stress and suicide. If you haven't already, when you really do research on mental health statistics, just in the US alone, it is terrifying. And it's crazy that we don't talk mm -hmm. about it more. It's also crazy that we don't talk about what you can do even just in terms of the foods that you're consuming to combat this. Another uh, conversation that I had in this series was about how the food that you eat does affect your mental health and all of how you kind of go about your day. And I feel like something as simple as that, you know, what we don't really talk about. And so I'm just glad to be having this conversation and that you, whether you started doing it intentionally or not, like the fact that you address mental health in your work, it just, creates that vocabulary, it creates a conversation. I feel like that's how we get closer to realizing not everybody has it together. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Besides therapy, besides music, how else can someone who feels alone seek help or just kind of find a little bit of hope in that space? Um, definitely good friends. Mm -hmm. um, you have friends that really care about you and really like are there for you and support you. Uh, you can find solace in them and, you know, ultimately you want to get back to yourself. You know, mm -hmm. ultimately you want to have these conversations with yourself throughout the day. Just like your friend is going to be telling you it's going to be okay and you're good, there's nothing wrong with you. You have to be able to have those conversations with you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, but your friends aren't therapists. You know, your friends don't know how to identify certain things unless they've done the homework and they've done the research. Mm -hmm. So you can't even fully you can't even fully rely on them. It's um it's a very serious thing that you have to either talk with a professional, um, and you have to you have to get there. Mm -hmm. You have to do work. You have to. Yeah. What's something that your therapist has told you about yourself that you were like, that's news to mm -hmm. me? <laughs> uh, man. Honestly, I, I think the when I first years ago I went to I had a couple therapy sessions I told you and he told me something <laughs> he told me I was telling him about my life and I was telling him about some things that were going on and he was like do you ever think that maybe when maybe you just want to say no to things and you just and you say yes because you you know you just want to make everybody happy and you just you know because it sounds like a lot of the choices you're making you just want to say no but you don't say no and that's the problem that's where like it starts so he kind of just put me on to the fact that like i was my problem because i was agreeing to things that didn't align with my spirit and how i felt mm -hmm. in my life and so i learned that yeah that's part of the self-sabotaging behavior because mm -hmm. you're not like living in your truth mm -hmm. you know? I've only been to therapy once and I was like give me something mm -hmm. and I she did tell me and this is I like to have this conversation with people she was like well how did that feel and I was like yeah it was whatever but like anyways and she's like no but like like what did that feel like and I was like you know I try to just be positive and like keep things pushing what's the point of being sad about something when you can't control it right and so that's something I'm trying to figure a balance out with is like acknowledging the feeling feeling the feeling but also not letting it like take course of your whole day you know what i mean right right how yeah. how do you navigate that like what is your advice with that i slow it down again yeah. you know it's like yeah. something happens or an intrusive thought comes to me and i forgive myself in that moment and i um i try to just you know take it easy mm -hmm. Understand that, you know, it's, it's like, bro, like, you're going to have those bad moments, but you have to get on. You know, it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up. That's being committed to growth. You know, um, it, it's, it's commitment. It's just like when you're, it's like I've been eating good for the last two weeks, and today I just had a burger, mm. you know. But you can go one of two ways. You can say, all right, now I'm going to, since I already had a burger, I'm just going to keep on eating burgers for the rest of the month. Or you can say, you know what? That I, I slipped up real quick mm -hmm. and I, I'm getting back to my smoothies tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know? So it's the same thing where it's just like you can slip, but the commitment isn't about how many times you mess up. It's about like, I, I'm, I'm back at it. 
Mm-hmm. You know? And just making that com- those little commitments every day eventually gets you to the place where it doesn't take all this mental energy to be positive, to be saying your yeah. affirmations, to have gratitude. Like, it may be really hard when you first start doing it, but then your brain just kind of works that way and it's right. not so hard. Right, it becomes your habits. It becomes right. like who you are. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's It's not like a show. Yeah. <laughs> it's just real life. Yeah, it's real. It's real. What do you think, like the things that you used to stress about when maybe your career was first starting, I'm sure are different than what causes you stress mm-hmm. now. How has your conversation around mental health changed throughout your career? I think uh, it, it just got way deeper, you know, like the because my thoughts and my understanding of it just became, you know, more and it increased. And um, I feel like before I was just talking about my feelings. It's like, it's almost like um, chaos, you know? Like a whole bunch of just, just splatters on a page. <laughs> and as I started learning more, then everything, it's like the picture started becoming clearer, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I started like taking my time and it's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, now kind of understanding more things, it's like, the, the the drawings are more intricate, you know, and I take I, I'm slower with it and I'm more careful about what I do because I know that what I do has an, an imp- impact on the people that are listening. And uh, I want to make sure that I want to make sure that I'm giving the world something positive and something that's going to aid in growth, you know, rather than something that is just it's, it's from my heart and it's real. But I don't want to give you something that's just going to keep you stuck, you know, mm-hmm. just because I feel stuck, you know, like, so sometimes I don't even want to make music if I'm in a certain space, you know, mm-hmm. if I haven't fully metabolized something, sometimes I'll step away and be like, I'm not ready to make this album, you know, I'm not ready to do this right now. And I, and I did that with the album I want to drop in, um, in 2022, uh, I was going to drop it in 2021, but I was in such a bad space that I was like, I can't mm-hmm. because that's not the purpose of this, mm-hmm. you know? Also, when you talk about spending a lot of time by yourself, you've consistently been dropping work, yeah. <laughs> especially yeah. since the pandemic is kind of wild. The consistency that you've kind of found for yourself, is that a result of being unplugged from the world? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I was I was just going through a lot. And mm-hmm. so um, uh, I went back to, um, I realized, the thing is I knew where I was. You know, I knew I was aware, or I had an awareness that I didn't have years ago. So I was in the same space where I was making music as a outlet just to get all, all these feelings. Sure. I, so I was definitely throwing um, like Splatter. pl- splatters <laughs> at the at the at the canvas, and I w- and so it's raw. Like mm-hmm. what I've been dropping has been like very raw and mm-hmm. very like, and I know that, and I know that I I can do both now. You know, mm-hmm. I can do the splatters, but I can do the intricate painting. That's just like you know you step back and it's like wow, but um, mm-hmm. 2021 was I had a, I had a lot of stuff to get off my chest. Um, I had a lot of stuff in my heart. And, you know, 2022, I'm going to really just take my time. I feel like when you're first starting out in your career, it's kind of, yes, there is fear, but it's also fear of the unknown. Once you start acquiring more success, you have a better idea of, like, the world that you're stepping right. into. What kind of new lessons have you learned about the world or just about people in kind of, finding your success, you know, yeah. bigger platform, bigger problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I learned that, man, it's, it, I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, one of the main things is that, like when you get a, to a level of success, or when you get famous or whatever, people no longer see you as human, you know? Like uh, you're now this figure that can, they can do whatever, you know, they can destroy you, they can hate you, they can love you, it's mm-hmm. like, but, uh, for some reason, a lot of people look at you like you're less, you're, you're more than human, but le- whatever it is, you're not. You're not them, you know? Yeah. It's like, you're not them, and you need to be held to a different standard as me, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, I can make mistakes, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you can't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can have a personal life, but you can't. Mm-hmm. So I, like, I learned that about, you know, like the way the world is, you know, it's it's a a weird thing, but. That's pretty scary. Like throughout your day, like, do you think about, oh, like three million people listen to me on Spotify or when I post this story, this many people are going to see, like, do you wrap your head around that? Sometimes, Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it comes to my mind. I think about, damn, 
three hundred thousand something followers or um yeah three million listeners on spotify uh it's not until i actually i have to actually think about it but the thing is i'll be going through so much in my everyday life that these people i realize people really think you live this like super glamorous life super it's like bro i pick up my son i try to eat food <laughs> you know i try to make time to eat and like i got so much to do like it, 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 every day is filled with real life stuff that you go through, that we all go through. So it's just, it, people think that you just have it made. Even, you know what's so crazy? Even the people in your life that are your friends that know that, know that my life is super normal, mm -hmm. um, not even just friends and whoever's in my life, it's just like, they think, they have this, this thought about my life and what I'm doing every day and that I'm not doing anything on a day, on a day to day basis. I'm like, bro, I work and I raise my kid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's it you know and I try to have fun and so like that's that that's life it's like I don't think about three million listeners when my kid is screaming at me and wants to do something and he's mad because I just need to sit down for five minutes I'm not thinking about that I'm thinking about I need five minutes so I can like get back up and you know, play two hours of basketball with this kid, you know? <laughs> so it's just like, that's that's life for me. That's my life. It's not the three, the, 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 the listeners and the Instagram followers and all of that. You don't think about it until you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But when you're living, you know, it's, it's like nothing. It doesn't exist, mm -hmm. you know? What is the biggest misconception you would say people have about you as a person? Like, let's just mm -hmm. take the artist, all Instagram, all that stuff <laughs> well, out I'll tell it. you, I'll tell you, I think, I think the biggest misconception people have about me is that like I'm so perfect and like kind and wholesome all the time, you know? And I don't have moments like for some reason it's, it's, it seems like because of my music because my music is like I talk about real life, you know? I I it's so crazy because in my music I talk about all the problems I have and all like all the ways that I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And people People look at me and they think that, bro, like this guy's just, he's just so wholesome and we love him and he's hes amazing and, you know, he's so positive and things like that. But it's like, bro, I have my moments just like you, you know? Like if, if something, if somebody punches me in the face, I'm gonna react just probably just like you mm -hmm. would, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so like, I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a person with, I mess up, you know? Mm -hmm. I do good things, you know, people, I have people that love me. I take care of my child and he loves me and I love him and I got family, mm -hmm. you know, my family have their own things to say about me. You know, yeah. they have good things and bad things to say about me. And it's just like, yo, I'm just, I'm just a guy, you know, don't like, I'm, you shouldn't put me on a pedestal, mm -hmm. you know? I've been thinking a lot recently about why there is this kind of obsession with artists and celebrities or actors. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it kind of comes down to the fact that artists get to say whatever they want, they get to talk however they want, dress however they want. And not to mention you also have like a team of people behind you that are serving your greater purpose, right? I think if everybody in this world had like a team who like understood mm -hmm. what they were trying to do and they had a schedule put together <laughs> you know what i mean like i think it's right. that is the appeal because I'm, I'm otherwise i'm like why you know why do millions of people show up to concert venues and want to take pictures like what is that all about to me and i feel like artists like you are the only people in the society that we live in who gets to say exactly how you feel, speak in interviews, like even stuff like this. Interviews with artists is how you really get to know them as people. And it's like the average day-to-day -day person doesn't get to sit down with cameras and lights and mics right. and talk about how they feel, you know? Right. When you were younger, like why did, was being an artist an attractive option for you? Mm. Growing up, I watched, you know, Jay-Z and Ja Rule and 50 Cent and you know, every artist, and it was just like, man, they, they're the man, you know? <laughs> it's like, they get all this respect, um, you know, they get all the girls. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, life is great for them, bro. Like, they don't, they money all over the place. It's just like, bro, like, they're not worried about a thing, mm -hmm. you know? And here it is, I wanna be like them, you know? They, they, they dress the best, you know? Mm -hmm. They look the best, and everybody loves them. So that attention, you know, it's, it's it, everybody wants it. People, people want that attention, especially when you're not getting that attention and you don't feel loved and you don't feel 
like you you don't have the financial stability and you don't get that that attention from the people around you and you just you don't know you don't know what that feels like you only know what it looks like you know mm-hmm. and um as an artist that has like gotten some kind of some sort of attention like that it um I didn't I didn't really think about it until I realized that other people wanted it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like I was so busy working for it <laughs> mm-hmm. and that I never really, I didn't stop and look and say, yo, I have all of this stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. It was always like working to, to, to keep what I have and working for my family. And the, it was like a, a means to an end, you know? And I'm just now realizing how much of a drug fame is and, and how much of, and it's not even because it's the way I look at it, it's because of other people looking at me and realizing that, bro, they want this. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's like you can, be in, you can be in a relationship and somebody can, that person that's with you can want what you have. Mm. It's not, they don't even want you. They just want what you have. And that realization, rate, when I came to that realization, it made me look at my whole life different. And like the people that I can allow into my life versus like the people I've been allowing into my life. And it's like, bro, and I had to look and say, bro, I'm not normal. Like, I don't live a normal life. Mm -hmm. I'm a normal person, but to these people, I'm not normal. Mm -hmm. And even though I look at my, when I look in the mirror and I have, and I see a a person and I see me, these people don't look at me like that. How do you explain to people what being an independent artist means in this day and age? Like, if you really had to break it down for the people who are unfamiliar with the music industry, to explain mm-hmm. like the path that you forged for yourself. Yeah, I think um, being an independent artist is, you just have to do it yourself. It's a lot of DIY. Um, I don't think you can really make it if you don't have that attitude where it's like, all right, I'll pick it up myself and do it. You know, mm-hmm. I shoot my own videos. I record my own music, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I don't have an engineer in there saying, you know, you ready? All right, cool. You know, I'm that's all me. I go from the booth okay. to the computer, to the booth, to the computer. And so um, being an independent artist is just like your, your hands are directly on your career, you know? Whereas I feel like when you're on a record label, you make the music, you, you, you walk into the studio, you, you get on a couch, you hear it back, you tell them what you like, you don't like, and then you go to the video shoot and they got it all set up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it's just like, I kind of had have a different path of where my hand is in every part of my career. Because yeah, I think when we see people on billboards and see how many people around the world listen to their music or when they're on tour, it's it's easy for us to be like, oh, that person's just successful. And it's like, mm, mm-hmm. there's like a whole machine right, that's right, right. kind of creating this brand. I could see somebody wanting to be on a label because it's like somebody's gonna take care of all the other stuff, you know, and you can just make music. It's like, I can just show up, make my music. I show up, I do the video and then I go home, you know? and everybody else is handling everything else, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm only responsible for this part. Mm-hmm. So like, it's definitely for somebody that just, I just wanna make music and that's all I wanna do. I don't wanna think about anything else. A label would be, you know, mm-hmm. what you should do. I mean, you have really sole ownership over everything that mm-hmm. you do. Have you ever been inclined to kind of entertain the label conversation? Uh, I think when I first started, the goal was to sign to a label, you okay. know? That was like, the ultimate win if we get a you know get a label deal so the only thing the only reason why I didn't sign was because I started you know having these meetings with these labels and the deals were just so bad mm-hmm. that um it didn't make sense so it's not that I didn't want that machine behind me it's just that it didn't make sense mm-hmm. especially because I was already doing numbers I was like I might as well just keep going you know it sounds like you never got to a point where you were like, well, if I just had this, then mm-hmm. I'd be where I'm at. You know, mm-hmm. you were like, no, I'll learn how to mix and I'll learn how to shoot. When did you stop, I guess, making excuses for yourself? Like, when did you kind of start seeing the universe bringing you the results of kind of like the fruits of your labor? I remember being really bitter, you know, being really bitter about, you know, not my music not being on blogs and nobody promoting my music and the people that were at one point promoting my music not promoting it and kind of it's it really feels like yo y'all is just giving up on me as an artist and uh yeah that i got to a point where i was just like i can't think about that you know i have to just i have to do it for myself mm-hmm. and so in in that moment i kind of like 
um, I stopped making excuses, like you said, and I decided I was gonna ignore everybody that was ignoring me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was gonna act like they didn't exist, just like they're trying to act like I don't exist. And I specifically focused on my fans mm -hmm. and the people listening to my music. And so watching the, you know, my Spotify listeners go up, that was a big driver for me because I was always dropping music because I'm like, all right, so this is how I'm going to gauge my success. Mm -hmm. Not by how many people are talking to me about me online, but how many people are listening to my music. Mm -hmm. And my as my artists, my listeners are going up, I'm like, all right, good. I'm succeeding. I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I was gauging my success. And so I think because my mind was on my listeners and not on all the other stuff, um, I was able to better gauge how I can you know, connect with my listeners more and how I can create more music that they're gonna, you know, connect with. And how can I, like, what kind of content do I need to create to really build that relationship? And so I focused on my relationship with my fan base and that really did wonders for the, the long run. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you hear from the people that come to your concerts or your meet and greets or DM you? Like, what are some things that you hear that you were like, well, I was not expecting yeah. this to come from a stranger from all of this, which started in your bedroom, you know? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is like, yo, you saved my life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like the most common theme. Like, yo, you changed my life. Like your music helped me get through a really tough time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going through a really bad breakup or I lost a family member and listening to your music or this song, she, you know, like my friend loved this song and she passed away. And now it's like, I hold this song close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a lot of people just saying that the music helps them get through their life, you know? Mm -hmm. Did that change your process? Like when you're writing now, are you keeping them in mind or is it still more, I just need to get this out and if it helps people, it helps people? Yeah, I definitely keep them in mind because um, I want, I want, I want to give good messages to the world. I want to, I don't want to put anything negative into the world. Um, so I, I focus definitely on like, yo, making sure what I'm saying is right. And um, it comes from a good place and not like a bitter place and uh, not a depressed place, but it's just like, yo, this is, even when I'm talking about sad things, I want to show people like the light at the end of the tunnel you know mm -hmm. it's like your life is sad things happen in life that are really sad and it's not all good mm -hmm. no and but you know I, i'm gonna show you that i'm not perfect too and i'm gonna show you in my music that like yo i go through this stuff too mm -hmm. but i'm trying to be better and it's like i feel like it's a community like we're all doing it together especially mm -hmm. when i see like the spotify rap and um everybody's showing how many hours they've listened to my music mm -hmm. That's when you, I really realized that we're all in this together, you know, and they found, they found me and they, they clinged on to me, they clung on to me. And now we're, <laughs> we're really experiencing life and they're listening to, to my story mm -hmm. and, you know, and they share their stories with me. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. Yeah. You can tell when an artist is doing what they're doing to hear people screaming their name or you know mm -hmm. lining up outside the venue and i feel like when i've been to your concert in the past it was like is this community and it was like everybody that you meet is in a good mood because mm -hmm. everybody's going to the same place they know what they're going there for and it's like you're just one of those artists that it's like it's not about people screaming your name it's more like i care about you when you leave here and you go mm -hmm. home and you're by yourself with your thoughts were there any artists for you that kind of modeled this or how did you find this space in the industry? Pharrell was like that for me, mm -hmm. you know? And I used to listen to a lot of NERD and like that group really inspired me. You know, I feel like they were really talking to my teenage self, you know? And I felt those words, you know? I felt I felt his words when he would say certain things and he would, I would feel like, yo, I can do this, you know? Like I can be, I can be great. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I try to give people what that gave me, you know, mm -hmm. that that I did that I can I can be better. It wasn't just about the skill level, uh, which obviously he's crazy talented, and but it, it was more of that like his messaging was so positive, and I wanted to take not when I when it came time for me to make my music, I wanted to mess together the the skills and the messages and really just and do the same thing that he did for me. Mm -hmm. Did you ever find a point in your career where you had to 
adopt a new energy to kind of be taken more seriously? Did that lead you to feel misunderstood? Can you talk a little bit about humility um, and confidence in your career? Yeah, um, I think life humbled me. <laughs> it wasn't, I don't think I was always like that. I think you go through certain things and life just, it beats you down. And, and it, it really shows you, like puts everything into perspective, like, you know? So, I mean, I feel like we're kind of born with this confidence, you know, and then as time goes on, you know, you're, you're putting your place, you know, mm. and obviously being cocky and arrogant is different than being confident. You definitely do anything in your life. You have to have confidence to like get out of bed and say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make it happen. Mm. Like you definitely take on this um this persona of or this this idea that like I can do anything. Mm. Like, especially when you want to do something like music or it's like you you're going against so many odds it's crazy like it's it's really sick when you think about how many people want to be musicians and artists and how can you get from this level to that level to to try to get up there hopefully one day i remember it, i would talk to myself in the mirror every day and i would tell myself yo you're going to get everything done on your list today you got all this stuff to do you're going to make it happen you and I would really have these talks like like Issa Rae and um and insecure. insecure. Mm -hmm. I would have those talks with myself like yo every morning right right after I get out the shower. So you really have done that. You've done like morning mm -hmm. mirror affirmations. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. I, I've I've done that. I I remember doing that because I, a lot of people were saying that I couldn't do it and that I wouldn't do it and I shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And it was a point where I was the only one telling myself I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, so constantly having those conf those conversations with myself is what pushed me to keep going. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to stop, you know, that's the way I look at it. You know, I look at it like people, I'm not, I'm not gonna prove everybody that said I couldn't write, you know? And I'm not gonna prove the people that believe in me wrong, you know? Like, I, I'm gonna, and I'm not gonna prove myself wrong, because I, I can do it, so I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And that, that keeps me on my path, it's just like, yo, there's no turning back. I, I, I chose this road and I'm gonna take it all the way to the end, whatever the end is, I'm mm -hmm. taking it there. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the things in life that you are working towards right now? Or working on developing more, growing? Like what are your kind of core values at this time? My, my core values is just being at peace. Mm -hmm. Like every day waking up and feeling peace and sharing peace with the people around me and just being present and maintaining presence every day <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, until it's like second nature. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be able to hit those bumps in the road and they not not affect me like they used to, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have those moments and where everything is not perfect and something goes terribly wrong mm -hmm. and I'm st I'm still staring. You know, I'm I didn't I didn't get sidetracked. I'm not over there and over there. I'm just I, it's, it's just life. You keep going. So I want to. I want to maintain that. I want. I want to be here. I don't want to be up here, up there. Mm -hmm. I just want to. I just want to live my life and be good. That's my main thing. When you think about having to, the bigger you get, probably the more people you need on your team, the more people you need to depend on. Um, how do you navigate that? Like, are you an easily trusting person? Um, no, no. <laughs> not at all. Not yeah. at all. Um, I. I don't think that my career needs to get bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm, 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 I'm not in the race, you know? Like, I feel like, and that's what has kind of like saved me. And it's like, I, I don't feel like I'm part of this thing where I have to continue, this, every year I need to get bigger, every year I need to do this. I don't have goals like that. Like, my goals are like, be a better dad, mm -hmm. be a better friend, be a better partner. Um, but as far as like my career goes, like I can stay where I'm at forever. I'll never feel envious over this person having this opportunity. And so I don't feel like my team needs to get bigger. Mm -hmm. I feel like my team will grow naturally. And if somebody else comes on a team that can do this extra thing and I, and I trust them, mm -hmm. then it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I'm not allowing people on my team unless I really like, unless you're family, you know? Mm -hmm. Those are the only people that are gonna be on my team, mm -hmm. you know? Something I've noticed about myself is like, if things are going really well in a chapter of my life, like all my prayers are being answered or, you know, whatever it is, I'll be like, hold on, like mm -hmm. things are a little too good. Like when is something gonna pop up? Do you ever run into that? And do you, how do you kind of snap out of that 
doubtful fear? I kind of learned that the those the bad things are gonna come no matter what. Okay. Whether you notice that everything is good or not. So I just try to enjoy the moment when everything is going really well. Mm -hmm. Because w the inevitable is bound to happen, that something is gonna get messed up and something is gonna happen. Yeah. So I just try to enjoy the moment where everything is okay. And I really just bask in it. And sometimes I'll bask in it to the point where like I'll shed tears mm -hmm. because I'm enjoying this like peaceful moment in life and, I, and, and I'm appreciating it so much that it's just like, bro, this is overwhelming. Like just how you can get overwhelmed with sadness uh, you can get overwhelmed with joy. And um, I try to get overwhelmed with joy. Mm. Yeah. What advice would you give to you when you were first realizing, wait, I need to take this music step seriously? Mm. What did they need to hear? What was nobody around you really telling you that was that kind of missing piece? That once you unlocked that belief, you were like, all right, we're good. I mean, I think I, think I would tell them something completely not music related. I would just say... Um, like your relationship with yourself is the most important thing you know focus on it um don't take yourself too seriously uh you're you're great at what you do you're you're, you're amazing you're talented you're all of that you have to believe it for yourself mm -hmm. and more than believing that you're a great musician or you're a great rapper or whatever um believe that you're just a beautiful person you know and you deserve all the good things and the success is going to come but um, but if you don't, if you're not able to be present, you won't enjoy it. <laughs> so, so learn how to enjoy your life.